evening, members of the on the last year board of trustees. Thank you for allowing me to address you this evening. My name is John Gillespie. I'm a teacher who began my career in Humble ISD, and I'm speaking to you today as a member of Humble ISD parents, a group of stakeholders with the deep concerns regarding your choice for superintendent. I want to say one thing, Dr. Scanzo. I started the year you started. You've been in every classroom that I've ever taught in, and you've answered every email. Yeah. Happy retirement. Imagine for a moment that Dr. Scanza was not retiring, but moving to another district. How many of us would raid the Facebook page of his new home to warn residents to quote, beware, mm -hmm. stay vigilant, keep your board accountable, and fight, do whatever it takes, have no regrets. These dissenting voices from Colorado were dismissed by some as the unfounded rantings of reactionaries or even more fanciful, disgruntled union leaders. But we have had no trouble locating the source of their outrage, and it is disturbing. It bothers me that Dr. Fagan is an outspoken proponent of so-called school, cho school choice. She champions reforms that rob the public trust of funds which find their way into hands of private investors. Douglas County leadership under Fagan's direction embarked on a controversial and ultimately costly voucher scheme that was at length rejected by the community and declared unconstitutional, costing the taxpayers millions in legal defense fees. And when we ask that you, the board, explain your choice in light of Fagan's known advocacy of both vouchers and merit pay, you committed to your decision saying that we don't support these things. I am glad to hear of your commitment. But why does the board remain committed to unanimous backing of a candidate who has built a career on these initiatives that our community has never supported? Clarification can be found in the words of Mr. Mr. Keith LaPaz, who posted to his Facebook page. <laughs> <laughs> that the, desire, the, 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 the decision to hire Dr. Fagan was driven by decisions made in Austin regarding teacher evaluations, innovation, vouchers, and charter schools. Mr. LaPaz continued, I personally wanted the next superintendent to have significant experience with these issues to know what has worked and what has not worked. We've already seen that Dr. Fagan's voucher program was declared illegal. And Douglas County is in the process of restoring a system in which public funds cannot be claimed by corporate or religious interests. But what of teacher evaluations? We all know that changes are coming from Austin. And yes, we are going to need a leader who can deal competently with these issues. But Dr. Fagan's last attempt at revamping a teacher evaluation system has also ended in failure. Under her leadership, Douglas County poured 12 million into site continuous improvement of teacher effectiveness. The program requires teachers to devote precious classroom planning time to documenting their own worthiness, and has done nothing to promote a positive relationship between teachers and the district in which they serve. An independent survey shows that over 90% of teachers, includes those, including those who supposedly profited from site, now reject it. Vouchers and teacher evaluations, maybe they're coming from Austin, maybe they're not, but perhaps the most alarming information comes from the newly elected board members because of their opposition to Fagan. One member described Dr. Dr. Fagan's time at Douglas County as a period of hurt, trauma, anger, and loss. The Douglas County Board of Director of Education declared that Fagan's departure is the first step in restoring public trust. Finally, Douglas County parents issued a statement in which they expressed hope that Fagan's resignation will be a positive step toward the healing of our school district and community. And yet, members of the board, you have asked her to lead us.